After 20 years of triathlon experience and over 15 years of coaching, I've trialed numerous sessions, countless workouts. Some make you faster, some make you stronger, some are a waste of time. Some you just don't know if they're working because you saw someone else doing it. If this is you, there'll be other people thinking the same thing. So what I've done, I've broken down 12 sessions, four swim, four bike, four run. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it and what it is, but I'm gonna highlight what it's good for, who it's good for, and if it's ranked a waste of time in my view or right up there with performance related and I'm actually going to back it up with a couple of science reviews alongside my own views so if this is interesting to you stick around hope you enjoy it leave some comments below please subscribe or get in touch if you have any questions of course let's start with the swim because that's I suppose the first discipline now there's numerous experts in this field and numerous high level triathlon coaches that have their beliefs so I've cherry picked over the years from some of the people that I really respect and tried a lot of it, worked out a few things myself and then with years and years of application realized what works and what doesn't work. Some of the fluff, some of the detail and let's break it down, let's go. So first of four sessions, number one, 45 minutes of drills. Should triathletes do that? Absolutely a waste of time. Whoa, does that mean that you shouldn't do any drills? No, so in terms of ranking, it's on a low ranking if you spend that duration of drills. Why? Because we're not competitive pool swimmers. Five to 12 minutes of drills in your warm-up, really good to set the tone and activation. Triathletes should do that. Yes, definitely. Not every session. Make sure it counts and I would probably only use two or three drills. That's enough. Number two, 3.8 kilometer or 1.9 kilometer continuous. Highly advantageous in the specificity phase for triathletes. What does that mean? Well, as you get closer to your event, you basically want to be conditioned for the demands of the event. Ironman's 3.8 Ks, now, and 70.3 is 1.9. Now, most swim sets are broken up into hundreds, 200s, 300s. We can do interval training, we can break up the boredom, but most importantly, it makes two to three kilometers go by quite quickly. No one really wants to get in a swimming pool and swim 3.8 Ks. In terms of ranking, I rank it up really high in the specificity phase. Number three, repeated. 10 to 12, 50 meter efforts with two to four minutes rest recovery. That's the key there, the two to four minutes. No. Why? Because triathlon's not an anaerobic sport. We are not trying to be sprinters. Yes, you could argue once you're listening to that, that sprint work is great for neuromuscular control, muscle activation, taking out your sprints in the triathlon. I'm talking about the 85% of the triathlon field, which is probably you watching this video, doing high level anaerobic work with long rest, which will take forever. It's for sprinters. We are not sprinters, we are aerobic engines. Yes, we do need a little bit of speed here and there. Trickled in swim, bike and run, but low ranking is what I give repeated 50 meter sprints with long rest. Number four, finally, 400s with paddles and pool boy. Now, this is a strength session, clearly. It's higher risk of injuries around the shoulders if you're new to the sport but if you build into it it's high ranked for me certainly in the general conditioning phase and then as you get close to the event you lengthen the repetitions to 600s and 800s if you can tolerate it start with two to three 400s build up to six to ten 400 meters with about 40 seconds recovery and that's all done aerobically so not out of breath Big bang for buck, arms dead, legs fresh, ready to go. You'll find huge gains when you put the wetsuit on, ready to go in your triathlon. That's your four swims dissected, which I think are ranked low to high. Moving on to the bike, which most of us enjoy loads because it's outdoors and it's the longest portion of your triathlon, whether you sprint distance to an Ironman. So if we're focusing on middle distance and if we're focusing on 70.3 right now for the purpose of this video, Let's hit these four sessions. Are you ready? Three to five minute VO2 intervals with equal rest. Now this could be three, four repetitions up to six repetitions. Ranked highly, quite specific for triathlon, working above your threshold power. And you can actually sprinkle that all year round depending on the time of the year. And another area here that's overlooked is you can slice up those four five minute intervals to shorter amounts depending if you aren't conditioned to handle three minutes straight off the bat so instead of doing three minutes you do three by one minutes with equal rest building up to the minimum standard of three minutes for around about 18 minutes of total work will give you big gains for
for your threshold, which is directly linked to, correlated to your 70.3 performance. So ranked high, and it can be done most of the year round, especially important for older athletes over 40. Number two, 40 20s times 10. What is that? 40 seconds on, 20 seconds rest, recovery. So high VO2 max, hitting your 90% of your VO2 max for each repetition. Why is this important? Well, you build up a high level of carbon dioxide with a short recovery. You have to do quite a few multiple reps, at least 10 to 12 to get to the build up of the CO2 in the bloodstream. Now, this has a direct correlation to your top end. I would probably put it as a moderate to high ranking of importance because a high VO2 max is not necessarily a key indicator of performance for a 70.3 athlete, but it is helpful, especially if that's your limiting factor of your threshold. When to do that? Most people do a lot of that in the winter because it's not specific to your race demands 12 weeks out. Give it a go in the winter, see how you improve your FTP. One to two sets of 10, 40, 20. So moderate to high ranking. Number three, heel repetitions on the bike. Probably the best workout there is for a triathlete. Yep. Strength training disguise on your bike. This could be three to five minute efforts on any incline. You're working over gear. You're building huge muscular strength. You're in an upright position. Big bang for your bike for time trialing because that's what we're doing. Now that could be built up to 15 to 20 minute reps. You do increase the chance of knee injury, so just be aware because of the force through the kneecap. Biggest bang for your buck, ranked high, do it all year round, huge returns. Number four, a five to six hour zone one long bike ride. In terms of time efficiency, not a great return for your bang for your buck. Most people ride that really easy, around 100 and 140 watts. You're just getting junk miles in the saddle. You're better off doing two to three hours with real specific structure. I'm talking zone one power in your recovery phase, your recovery portion of your, your power adaptation, your power zones. So there you have it. I'll rank that low. It doesn't mean I'm against long bike rides. That wasn't the workout. That was a zone one bike ride. There you have it, four workouts ranked backed by a little bit of science as well. I'm gonna include descriptions for the cycling in the link below. Have a look. Now you've made it this far. You're interested in the run, I'm sure. A lot of triathletes I find struggle with the run. They blame their lack of run training. Uh, often that's due to the bike being structured really poorly. So think about that and get in touch if you need some help. Here's four runs sessions that I'm gonna highlight. A two and a half to three and a half hour long, easy run. I'm gonna give that a low ranking, controversial. Hear me out. What does it do? It builds loads of fatigue, which increases the chance of injury, we know. We get quite tight as triathletes from cycling and sitting and general lack of mobility. So building extra fatigue on top of that is just gonna really decrease your resilience and open a huge can of worms for chance of injury. You're better off building your frequency in your week, shortening your runs, and actually if you want to, if you need to spend time in your feet to build up that distance for 70.3, you're better off adding some walking in on a really hilly terrain to build up really good run specific muscles with low impact. So long, easy runs, I'm gonna say a low ranking. Number two, 10 by 200 sprint or fast intervals speed work on the track. Low ranking for Ironman athletes, not a very good high ranking at all for a 70.3 athlete such as yourself. Why? You're better off doing something like 10 by 800s with a 200 jog at your half marathon pace or slightly above to develop durability and resilience for what's coming and build that up to 20 800s for the more experience as long as you've got a very good foundation phase because 200 meter sprints are not specific for your race goal of 21 kilometers so just because the fast runners are doing the speed work it really doesn't mean that you need to do it so i'm going to give that a low ranking 10 by 200s with 200 jog recovery number three three by 10 minutes threshold work at 97 to 102 percent of your threshold pace now this has got a high ranking for Ironman and specifically 70.3. Why? Because it works at around your lactate threshold, which is exactly where you spend a lot of the time for a half Ironman. Now, if three by 10 minutes is too much to start with, of course you slice that up into six by five minutes or four by eight minutes, etc. But it builds tolerance, builds a real good aerobic foundation. Sorry, it helps buffer lactate, which ultimately is what we're trying to improve 
for endurance athletes going for 70.3 so i rank that really highly it comes at a cost especially over 40 it does increase the chance of injury but also it's pretty tiring and there's a high glycogen carbohydrate cost so beware bear that in mind whatever age you are listening to this so that's your threshold workout which you get thrown around here a lot and there's some papers around that to back this up you've heard of double threshold days and so forth triathletes have been doing double threshold days for many years number four you're not going to believe this one aqua jogging with a running belt yes highly underrated injured or not injured triathletes as an optional low zero load workout working pure run mechanics with no gravity okay so what does that look like it's 20 to 30 minutes continued in a deep end of a pool up and down yes you might feel like a bit of an idiot but what that does to improve your economy your efficiency you have to move the whole body your core gets activated you can slice that up into intervals and so forth but try it as an additional to your third run of the week for low impact while you're swimming you can stop the swim if you've got a deep enough pull very low cost for a belt and you get a huge return on investment i'm going to put that moderate to high in ranking it's not what you thought of and i've definitely tried that myself injured not injured some of the top runners in the world complement their run training with aqua jogging like anything with triathlon training context is key take that into consideration when you're listening to this don't suddenly dive into 10 400s of paddles and poor boy think about where you are in your triathlon journey if you're a beginner common sense prevails you need at least one to two years of conditioning of training just swim bike and running before you can start getting into the nitty gritty if you need help with that please get in touch link in the description whether it's a chat or speaking to one of our coaches about how to get ready for your next 70.3 and thanks for listening and i really appreciate all your feedback speak to you soon